Hi guys, welcome to another 11th apartment video. My name is Shada Campbell and this week's tutorial is all about recipe illustration. This is part two of the series on the topic and this week we're focusing on text-based recipe illustration. So let's get started. Okay, so recipe illustration part two. Um, two weeks ago, we were talking about uh, harvest illustration. I was showing you guys how to illustrate all these different fruits and vegetables, but beyond me just showing you how to draw like a pear and a strawberry, what I really wanted to get across was that um, drawing especially simple things like food, it's really about developing your own style and representing those items in the way that you want to as an illustrator. So I hope you had fun with that and sort of started practicing a little bit of food illustration and had some fun with it. Then if you recall, da, 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 last week we got into recipe illustration. So from our harvest uh, drawings, we took that and we turned it into this recipe illustration. Um, this tutorial was all about creating these illustrated recipes where we're marrying our hand lettering and our handmade fonts and our illustration skills. We're using all that, but on top of that, we're also getting into design and layout. And even with great hand lettering and great illustration, these designs don't come together if you don't think about the way you want to lay them out and really get in to sort of the heart of the design. So we had a lot of fun. And this one I for the pumpkin soup I did that on camera and then I also did this one I created um, prior to filming that tutorial this is my white cake recipe and again you can see it's all the illustrated ingredients and it creates this fun visual visual representation of the recipe itself and those are a lot of fun to create those are both done on watercolor paper with paint and um, artist pens so that was last week if you missed it you can always go back and watch it and then and this week is part two, like I said, of recipe illustration. And this week uh, we are focusing on the more text-based recipe. So we're getting into um, to the real heart of the recipe, which is all the, not only the ingredients, but all the directions or the preparation method. Um, so this would be more appropriate for actually including in a recipe binder. It still comes off as a piece of artwork. I don't think this is too detailed to put on the wall. You know, you might not have three of them hanging, but I think one in a frame, depending how you illustrate it and lay it out, can be really beautiful. So we're just gonna be talking about this and how you would um, start to create a piece like this. So we'll go through it from uh, start to finish. So I illustrated this clam chowder recipe this week to act as my example for the more text-based illustrated recipe. And there's a few key points here and there's a few reasons why I chose it. And first of all, it's fall in the Maritimes, so it's just sort of that perfect seasonal recipe. We're still in Prince Edward Island and this is the sort of food we're cooking right now. But I also chose this recipe because it has um, a moderate level of ingredients and preparation. So it's not a super simple recipe. Of course I could turn a guacamole recipe into a one page piece of art. That's no problem, it has three steps, you know? But I chose something a little more involved so that we could talk a little bit about the balance between creating a preparation note at the bottom that is sensical and makes sense to the reader if they read it off the wall, but it's still sort of succinct and simple and doesn't get too long and wordy and turn your piece of art into really just a recipe. So there's a balance there between this being a word document but also being um, an art a p an art piece. Um, and so that's something that we'll talk a little bit about. So my clam chowder here, I've got my ingredients, my preparation method, I've done a title, a simple border, and then a few illustrations. And that's really what makes up the text-based illustrated recipe. And it's gonna be, it's gonna have enough text here that you could use this as a, a recipe document. And that's sort of the key, and that's the difference between the illustrated ones that we did last week that you couldn't necessarily use as a recipe. All right, so let's talk a little bit about how we begin a process like this. So once you've chosen your recipe, and I would encourage you to choose a recipe that you love and that you use often because they're just fun to have on your wall, fun to, um, you know, to work with. 
Once you've chosen your recipe, you're going to create a map, and this will serve as your, um, your layout, and this will help you to create a balanced um, piece of work that you're happy with in the end and that looks pleasing to the eye. So first things first, you want to leave something of a border. So what I've done here is I've just taken a piece of graph paper that's about the same size. Um, actually, this I decided to do this as a different recipe, but same size as my paper that I'll be working with. I've marked off a border because what you don't want is for the ingredients to sort of creep over to the edge of the page and maybe one illustration goes over a little too far. For a piece of work to look finished and polished, a lot of times all it needs is just a little white space, a little negative space. So mark where your border is going to be. Mark in where your title will be. A lot of times you're just going to put it in the middle or on the left at the very top there. Then you've got your space for ingredients and you're going to write where's your title ingredients going to go. Where are you going to put the title for directions or maybe preparation? And then where is that text going to go? So fill that in and then you're going to choose a few spaces where you're going to put um, some illustrations. And I've done one long one here down the side and then another smaller one in the bottom corner. And you can choose wherever. You could have an illustration right by the title. You could have it in between these two, sort of a long um, horizontal illustration in the middle. So think about that. And then I've jotted down, I don't know if you can read that, but a few things you're going to want to think about. So you're going to think about fonts. What fonts do you want to use? What fonts would look good together? A lot of the times I'll just do one text or, or sort of one cursive and one print. And those are really easy to mix, right? You've got a print and a cursive. They mix well. They're different. You're done. Um, detail elements like underlines and borders. Now that you've left the negative space, do you maybe want to add in a simple border? Do you want to do a single line, a double line? You could do a vine, you know, so think about that. Think about underlines, like here I've put a simple double underline. Um, and I just did that sort of because it reminded me of like being in school, you know, in grade school when the title gets a double underline. So coming up with the, the, some of those sort of um, nostalgic ideas for how we write a document I think is, is fun. Think about the colors you want to use. Um, black and blue I find is really strong and um, it just has sort of a nice look and you can do that with your Sharpies, but maybe you want just a few harvest colors like orange and red um, and you're going to illustrate a carrot and a radish. So something like that could be nice. And then finally you're going to think about your illustrations. When it comes to a recipe like the clam chowder, um, you're not going to pick out, say, or you could, I mean, I'm not, I shouldn't be telling you what you should and shouldn't do. Um, but for me, I wouldn't pick out, you know, the butter to illustrate, but I would illustrate the clams. Obviously, that's a huge part of it. The thyme, always I love illustrating herbs, so I'll always pick them out for part of the illustration. Um, this recipe includes PEI potatoes, so if I had done a third illustration, I would have put a potato in here because that's just sort of an iconic part of that PEI clam chowder. So think about all of those elements, and um, we're going to go through a recipe together starting now. Okay, so to begin, I'm going to do an example, and my example is for sort of a simple chicken soup. And so I've got a piece of graph paper here, and um, as I said, I think the best place to start is just by doing a border. Okay, so I've got my border here. So I'll know now that my whole recipe has to fit inside here. And I can measure in the middle, and I'll just come in a few centimeters from each side. Now this is going to be my new side. And I'll mark off where you know, my title can be so that it sits in the middle. So this is where the title can go. So within here, I'm going to put chicken soup. I'm going to do my ingredients. Hmm. I think I'm going to put an illustration. I know I've got a carrot as part of here, so I'm going to put an illustration, a long illustration right down the side, maybe even a little bigger. I'll do ingredients right here. Then I've got some room to write them out. 
So let's talk about the recipe a little bit. My ingredients are a four pound chicken, six carrots, four celery stalks, a large yellow onion, um, some kosher salt, and black pepper. So pretty simple. I think out of that what I'm going to draw is the carrot and I guess it just makes sense to draw the chicken. <laughs> so we'll put the carrot here. We'll, we'll just put a few ingredients in here and maybe I should put the other illustration down here in the bottom corner because I don't want it to seem too illustration heavy up at the top and that leaves me all this room here for my preparation method so this is just member for rough if you do a few of these there's no harm in that so I'd have all my ingredients kind of written out here I'm going to write you know prep preparation down here and then I've got lots of room to write that out. And then I'll put my other picture sort of in that corner there. And I think that gives a feel of a pretty balanced map. So we've got chicken soup. Our title goes in the middle there. Our ingredients. Our preparation. Or it could say directions there. And then we've got space to write that. And then I'm going to draw my carrot <laughs> over here. And I'll do my chicken. Very rough. <laughs> Down here. And so that will be my map. So I've got my border, two illustrations, two title, smaller titles for ingredients and preparation and my overall title. And then from there I want to start thinking about, okay, what fonts am I going to use? So I'm thinking um, for ingredients and preparation, I'm just going to use a simple print and I may even include like as a design element a little box around each of them the way they're drawn now so instead of doing the line border I'm going to draw like this cute little box around each I think I'll put an underline under chicken soup so I'm thinking of my fonts and also of some design elements that I might include then I might consider should I put a border around the entire recipe um, and that's always something you can think about about later as well. And now I'm going to show you how we take this from our rough map to our good copy. So of course that involves tracing paper as usual and I'm just tracing over my map here. I'm starting to add a little more detail so where the title is I'm writing it in the font that I like. I'm trying to fix up my illustrations a little bit. I'm writing out the ingredients and trying to see what looks good where and how I want to write that out, testing out my fonts, uh, starting to test out my little elements like borders and underlines. And then when it comes to writing out the preparation, I'm trying to write it in a way that is succinct. Um, so I'm short, sort of taking the sentences in the regular recipe and I'm shortening them and I'm sort of cutting the fat, so to speak. So. Um, that's what I'm doing there and just sort of seeing how it all fits together and I'm going to do a couple of these so I'm not going to stop at one. I'm going to trace over that one. You can see me here. I'm tracing it for a second time because some things are just a little off and um, I sort of need to stretch out um, the preparation especially. It was sort of too um, thin like it looked almost like columns so I'm getting it to go a little bit closer to the border there and just sort of working on those illustrations. I'm not really sure if I like the look of that chicken, so um, I'm just sort of tweaking things and um, the tracing paper really helps you to uh, keep what you like and get rid of what you don't like. And once I've got my 
um, trace design looking the way I want it to. So I've traced over it a couple times and everything's looking good. Then it's time to transfer it onto a piece of cardstock. As usual, I'm just taping it onto my nice piece of cardstock and then I'm using a piece of graphite transfer paper to transfer the image. But the difference is there is no good way to transfer all that text. You're always going to see a, like a dirty graphite smudge underneath. So I'm just transferring the images and the titles and then the rest we're going to do freehand. So you can see I've got my transferred images there, my titles and my illustrations and then I'm still going to use my um, my trace here to act as a guide. So I'm just going to place it next to me and that way I can see where did I want to place each ingredient, exactly how did I write the recipe out. So it's there as my guide. I am going to freehand it but first I'm going to grab a pencil and a ruler and I'm just going to lay down some really faint pencil lines to act as a guide and to help me keep my writing straight because it's really hard to write in a perfectly straight line. But if you have a guide, you should be fine and freehanding it can be a lot of fun. And that's what you see me doing here now. I'm going over um, my titles and illustrations with my Sharpie. I'm just gonna do this recipe all in blue, really sort of country kitchen look. Um, and you can see that coming together there. So it's sort of fun to go over all of it and get all that stuff looking good before you have to go in and do the freehand. But the freehand's not impossible. You can see me here laying down my faint pencil lines. And then I've got two guides. I've got the lines there to guide um, my hand and keep me steady and then I've got my traced image beside me so if I have any questions about okay how did I write it out, what what do I need to fit in in the first line here? I'm looking back and checking and making sure I'm sort of following along with my initial um, layout. And I suggest writing out your ingredients and directions in a font that you know you're comfortable with. I'm using my go-to sort of whimsical cursive. It's just a mix of cursive and printed letters and I use it all the time so I'm very comfortable with that. And you can see me just finishing up my illustrations and I'm going to add a border there and then I've got a little too much space so I added a second carrot and I've kind of got this dead space up at the top right corner and I'm just adding um, a little flag that, set, that shows the recipe yield. And then I'm pretty much all done. So I'm just erasing any of the remaining little pencil lines that I had on there. I mean, I made them so light that I almost don't even need to erase them. They're that faint. And I'm not going to take this one any further. This is still, I think you guys can see, a little bit rough. Um, definitely wouldn't be putting this one on the wall, but I think it's sort of a fun little um, project and it would be perfect as part of your cooking binder, you know, especially if you're putting together a recipe binder. You're not going to spend hours and hours on each recipe. Like this did not take that long and I think it looks really pretty at, and it would be great as part of a larger collection. So. That's sort of how you do it, and it's up to you how far you take it. You could transfer your illustrations and titles onto a really nice cream-colored paper or a nice piece of watercolor, and you could use watercolor pencil crayons or even watercolor paints to sort of add a little touch of color to those illustrations. You could take this a lot farther, but I just wanted to show you sort of the basics of this text-based um, recipe illustration. And just before we finish up, I show, I'll show i show you one other one that I did, and this is a good example. Again, I basically just did a really simple recipe card, so I haven't gone all out. I've just written out the recipe so that I have it. It looks pretty. I've added a little bit of illustration. I've used a nice font. I've done a bit of a border and underline, so just adding in some of those um, design elements and you don't have to go overboard to create some really beautiful pieces that will be part of your uh, recipe binder or recipe collection. And that's it for another 11th Apartment video. Thank you so much for watching today, guys. Please hit subscribe if you enjoyed the video and I will see you next week with a new tutorial.